Welcome to Los Santos, the home of Grand Theft Auto Online, a game that took the world by storm. Worldwide sales top $800 million. That's one night, easily blowing away all expectations and is now on its way to taking over the world's highest grossing entertainment vehicle ever. So why is it failing? The world of GTA is a world of endless possibilities where you could become a racer, a crook, own businesses, whatever you want, the possibilities really are endless in Grand Theft Auto Online. So if it's so good, what are the problems? Why are people leaving the game in droves? In this video, we aim to find out. G'day guys and welcome back to the channel for another GTA Online video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 5 problems that are causing people to leave GTA Online. The first major problem that GTA Online has is money. And what I mean by that is money is just way too hard to get. And on top of that, everything is extremely expensive to buy. You want a high-end apartment? You better have a few hundred thousand put aside. You want a business? Well, that'll be a couple of million. What about a supercar? Well, you better hope you've got at least a couple of million put aside for that. All right, then I'll just take a bike. You better believe that's going to be a couple million again. Well, at least I can do some jobs. That'll pay for some of it, right? Yeah, sure. As long as you've got plenty of hours to grind the game because most of them only pay 10 to 20 grand, which means you're going to have to do them about a hundred times to pay off one vehicle. What about that rocket bike I've heard so much about, the Oppressor Mark II? How do I get my hands on one of those? Well, I hope you're ready to either take a second mortgage out on your house or spend days upon days grinding the game because not only does it cost three to four million dollars just to buy the damn thing, you also have to spend an additional several million on a nightclub first, then a terabyte to store it, and then once you've finally got it, it doesn't even come with the rocket so you have to pay another 180,000 just to equip those to the thing. And that's not the only item like that in the game. There's plenty of items that need other things to be purchased first before you can even buy the super expensive thing you're trying to buy. For example, if you want a Deluxo, you're going to have to buy a facility first. If you want a mobile operations center, well guess what? You're going to have to buy a bunker first. And this can be really off-putting, especially for new players coming into the game, because it means either you're going to have to spend a heap of money on shark cards, and buy a heap, we're actually talking a lot of money here. For something like the Oppressor Mark II, as well as the Nightclub, and terabyte required to buy it to get it to a full lot of upgrades, I'm talking hundreds of dollars of actual money. So if you're looking to get a couple of vehicles all the way up to their max upgrades as well as a couple of businesses, you could even be looking at thousands of dollars of actual money. In fact, I think it's somewhere around the $6,000 mark if you wanted to buy everything in the actual game. The other alternative you have, of course, to that is to grind the game, but to be even anywhere competitive, you're looking at probably at least 100 hours of gameplay just to be able to compete in an online server, which is really just a joke for a paid game. That coupled with the fact that making money is almost impossible in an online lobby at the moment due to griefers, which we'll touch on shortly, makes the money issue a massive problem in GTA Online at the moment. To fix this issue, I think Rockstar only has three sort of options. Option number one would be to reduce the price of everything, but I can't really see that happening. We're too far into GTA Online now to change the price of what everything costs. So because of that, I think another good option would be to increase the payout on jobs and heists to make them a bit more in line with what everything costs in the game at the moment. Or thirdly, significantly increase the amount of money you get from shark cards. At the moment, we're still getting the same money for a shark card that we got in 2013, even though the amount of things to buy in the game has increased significantly. So because of that, I think they should change the shark card system and make it a bit more worth it for people to buy them by increasing the money significantly for what we pay for them now. I think if they implemented some of those, it would fix this massive money problem in the game at the moment, and if it did, it would be an incentive to keep not only new players, but current players continuing to play the game. The next big problem that GTA Online have at the moment is way too many griefers on the servers. 
For some reason, every time you go to log into a GTA Online session, you've got someone, or a heap of people usually, that care way too much about their KDs. The fact is, it really doesn't. GTA is an open world game for everyone to have fun and get along, yet you'll get these people on that seem to think that KD is the biggest thing in all of GTA Online. Because of that, every time you try to do a cell mission or a VIP mission, anything where you can make yourself a little bit of money to try and get you ahead in the game and get something you really, really want, a griefer will come along and blow you up and ruin your entire mission. It really is frustrating and it really does make it off-putting to want to continue to grind the game when every time you're doing a cell mission, some idiot in an Oppressor Mark II wants to come along and blow up your cargo. I don't know why Grand Theft Auto have such a problem with this. Like I said, KD really does mean nothing in this game, so I don't know why we get so many sweaty people on the servers who think that their KD is the be all and end all. Well, either that or they're just really sad, sad human beings. As we just finished discussing, money is hard enough to come by in this game without everyone blowing each other up. If everyone just got along and helped each other with their missions, it would make the game a lot better of a place to be and a lot easier of a game to play. Rockstar have tried to stop this by adding things like the Oppressor Mark II cooldown, passive mode cooldown so people can't just passive pop when they're in weaponized vehicles. However, if someone wants to grief, they're going to find a way regardless. It's unfortunate and it will eventually drive people away from the game, so let's hope that people grow up a bit and stop griefing on the servers. The third problem I think Rockstar have that are turning people away from GTA Online is loading time. For Christ's sake, is it just me or does this game have the longest loading time of any game in the history of gaming? Not only is the loading time absolutely ridiculous, sometimes it won't even find an online server for you, so it spits you back out and guess what? Another five minutes of loading screen. And if you're thinking, oh well, I'll just alt tab out and watch a YouTube video for example while I'm waiting for this loading screen. Uh-uh, think again. If you alt tab out, the loading screen just sits there infinitely. Like, come on Rockstar. If you're not going to let me load into a game quickly, at least let me do something else while I'm waiting for your game to load in. Anyway, I don't have much more to say about that. Rockstar, fix your loading time, or let me watch other things while I wait. Simple. The next thing that I think GTA Online really needs to improve is their DLCs. The last few DLCs or updates that they've done to the game have been a massive letdown. In fact, the last DLC they dropped, the KO Perico DLC, has to go down as one of the biggest letdowns in all of GTA DLCs, in my opinion. Not only did they hype this up as being the biggest DLC they've ever done, but they also really didn't deliver on any of that. They added a massive submarine, a couple of new weaponized vehicles, no legendary motorsports vehicles, apart from one in the drip feed, a heist which, whilst it's cool you can do solo, had a lot of bugs with the new island when it was first released, and the new island not really being free roam apart from one little area isn't that fantastic either. The other massive letdown to me was the music locker. It's just basically a nightclub that everyone can go to. What's the point of this, Rockstar? I genuinely believe they'd be better off adding more parts to the island, adding a San Andreas, for example, or a North Yankton, or any other part to the island that we could go and explore and make some new content for us. This to me would be much better than adding something like a public nightclub or another heist that, in my opinion, isn't even as good as the casino heist. People who have played the game for a long time are starting to get really, really bored. And giving us one major update every six months or so with only really enough content to keep us entertained for a month just really isn't good enough for a game that's now seven years old. If you're not going to give us GTA 6, at least give us more frequent updates. Or if you're only going to do one major update every six months, give us a heap of content. Like I said, 
a new part of the island we can explore, a whole heap of unique vehicles that are going to change the meta of the game, something that's going to give us more than one month of interesting playtime. And the last thing that's ruining GTA Online at the moment, and this is going to sound really weird coming from a person who reviews and compares GTA mod menus on their channel, is modders. Now, before you all get angry at me, hear me out here. I'm talking about the toxic modders. The ones that go on and just ruin people's games for no good reason. I, like many of you, use mods for the good things. As we've mentioned, Rockstar's game is getting extremely boring at the moment, and they're not really adding anything new for us, and anything they do costs an absolute fortune to buy. So, me personally, and I believe the majority of modders out there are actually like this, use the mods to make the game more interesting. Get some cool custom vehicles, add some money so we can try out the new vehicles that have been added to the game, and more than likely if you're like me, the main reason you probably got a mod menu was to protect yourself from other modders. And that's the ones I'm talking about. The ones you got a mod menu to protect yourself from. The trolls, the griefers, the ones who make the servers an absolute nightmare. There's no reason for this and it's absolutely ruining the game. People who go in there and they just cage people, kick people, crash them, put them on explosion loops, black screen them. It's just not fun for anyone. And if you're the kind of person that does that, you should be ashamed of yourself. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't a few people that probably deserve that. And hey, we've all probably been guilty of dealing out our own poetic justice. But for the main part, if you don't go out looking to ruin people's days, you're not part of the problem. However, it is a real problem and Rockstar really need to sort this out. And I hope they do so before GTA 6, because if they don't, they're going to have a real problem on their hands. As most of you would know, it's almost impossible to load into a server on PC without finding modders. And that's where the main problem is, is on PC. You don't really get this problem at all on console. I do feel though that mod menus wouldn't be used as often if Rockstar did fix up some of the other problems we've mentioned earlier in the video. If they fixed up the issue with money so it was more proportionate, people wouldn't feel the need to get menus for money. If they fixed up the DLCs and made the game more interesting, people wouldn't resort to menus to keep interest in their game. And if they sorted out the toxic modder problem, well, then we wouldn't have to worry about getting protections with our menus either. So hopefully Rockstar can sort all those problems out and we can get back to playing the game we love without all the trouble. Well, what do you guys think GTA's biggest problem is at the moment? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button for me. Also, why not subscribe if you're new here? We do plenty of GTA content on this channel and you don't want to miss out on any new videos. If you'd like to support the channel a little bit extra, consider becoming a member. There's a join button right next to the subscribe button. You'll get some cool badges and emotes, as well as some cool little perks as well. As always, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.